Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at Neon White. Neon White is a single player speedrunning FPS game that I've been wanting to play for a long time. So long in fact that my friend bought it for me back in Christmas last year and never bothered to play it till now. Why? Because of bloody live service games, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, and a bit of laziness on my part. I have an incredibly big backlog with plenty of games to play, yet I continue to play the same games over and over again, and I'm hoping over time I'll eventually get through all of these games. So I downloaded Neon White, gave it a go, and oh my god is this game good. Really good. I'm a big fan of FPS parkour slash movement games, coming from other games like Titanfall 2, Mirror's Edge, Apex Legends, and Cyberhook to name a few. Neon White changes the formula a bit opting for gun cards that can be discarded to perform cool parkour moves that aim to do one thing. Go fast. Time is of the essence and Neon White always encourages you to go as fast as possible, trying to get those sweet, sweet medals that these types of games usually have where you go for the set time that the devs give you. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and notifications turned on for more gaming content. Let's get into it, shall we? You play as Neon White, an assassin from hell who gets plucked out to heaven and participates in a competition known as the 10 Days of Judgment, where neons, criminals, or sinners compete over 10 days for a mechanical halo that lets them stay in heaven. The goal for this competition is to slay as many demons as they can, and the top owner will be rewarded with the halo. White starts off in a rough shape, however, as he wakes with amnesia and has no idea who he actually is. As the first day commences, you'll meet the Believers, who are the supposed protectors of heaven, though they just get neons to do the dirty work for them and colored neons which are yellow, violet, and red. These characters become essential throughout the game as you learn that they had a past of you back on the surface of hell, alongside a horrible heist that led to your deaths and being chosen to participate in the competition. Later on, you learn about Green, the competition's current champion and the main antagonist for the game, a person fueled by revenge, misconception, and a thirst for white, as he opens up to him about being his old boss, as well as being the favorite among the group. I do love the dynamic that each of these characters have as all of them have their own personalities and quirks, alongside being able to regain their memories and see what moments you had with them, which are acquired through a relationship system where you find gifts and give it to them. You also get more dialogue through this system too, opening up new and interesting conversations. There's also side characters like Raz and Mikey who are cat angels for whatever reason. I guess Angel Matrix's portrayal of angels in heaven are cute cats. Anyway, Raz is the guy who serves you at the Neon Bar, a place to lay off from all the action and all of his interactions are pretty much goofy conversations with items that he'll give you as a token of appreciation when you reach certain levels. Marky, on the other hand, I would argue is more of a main character, as he plays a part in explaining the later parts of the game, and assigns you missions across heaven. He also has his own relationship system too, acting similar to Raz's. Gabby is just a receptionist cat who books you in to see Mikey, but you pretty much just barge in every single time you go see him, so there's that. There you have it. All the game's characters are established. But here's where the game gets really complicated for me. At a certain point in the game, you'll soon learn about God, the Book of Life, and the Book of Death, with God being at the forefront of what's going on in heaven. There was a war that waged between God and angels that opposed him, and once the believers saw that heaven was in despair, they use that as an opportunity to create a massive dome known as the Firmament as a way of blocking any of God's doing out and creating their own vision of heaven, seeing it as a place of happiness, protection, and security. The game lost me for a moment because I wasn't sure what I was really fighting for outside of obtaining the books, primarily the Book of Life, which is meant to be a way of rewriting history in a sense and removing the believers for good. This narrative gets even more complicated when Green has a say in all this, and wants to use it to be rid of both the Believers and God, so that he can create his own version of heaven, just like the Believers. So, basically, doom in the world. It's just the way that everything is elaborated and told. It really confused me, and I had to do some research shortly after finishing the game. The final piece of the puzzle for the game story is the Inkhorn, used to write into the Book of Life and Book of Death. I also forgot to mention, the Book of Death is something like the book in the Death Note anime, where writing a name into it will kill the person. With Green's thirst for immense power growing by the end, you use the Inkhorn to write his name into the Book of Death, and the game finishes with God and Mikey contemplating on whether or not to put White's name into the Book of Life, despite saving heaven. As I'm writing this, 
I'm also realizing that the story is actually pretty good for the most part with an interesting plot and cool moments. For those that haven't noticed, Neon White uses a visual novel approach to both dialogue and storytelling, with scenes every so often during chapters to give players a break from the gameplay. And this is the part I see get criticized so often because on one hand, people like it due to the cringiness that it ensues. On the other hand, people don't hate it but don't mind it, which I'm on because while I did find some moments funny, there were other moments where I was just like, why even say this? On the last hand, you've got the people that find it annoying, horrible, and just an overall miss. The dialogue in this game will depend on your tolerance level with this sort of humor, but any opinion is pretty valid here. You can definitely tell that Angel Matrix wanted to put this sort of comedy in there and they never stopped doing this the entire way through. I also love how the screens are presented too, with a stylistic font, black boxes, and the characters popping up on the screen whenever it's their turn to talk. I've never played a visual novel, so seeing it in the flesh for the first time was a cool experience. Now for the best part of Neon White, which is the gameplay. Neon White is made up of chapters and levels and each level must be completed by killing every enemy and completing it as fast as possible. At first, you won't worry about completing it quickly as you'll be learning the game, but once the practice kicks in, you'll have a second mindset of killing all the enemies and going as fast as you can. The game starts off simple, teaching you basic movement and shooting mechanics, then becomes advanced as you earn new soul cards and learn new moves. Soul cards are the fundamental of Neon White, serving as both a gun and movement ability which is done by discarding it. You can only have two of these cards at a time and are essential to get in those fast times. I feel like this is what Neon White changes in terms of the formula as opposed to other parkour games, seeing that it makes use of play input in order to perform actions as effectively and efficiently as possible. You've got the handgun or elevate, which nets you an additional jump, so like a double jump. The rifle or gunpowder lets you dash forward and smash through red doors. The light machine gun or purify places proximity mines that detonate after a few seconds. They can also be used to give you a hype boost, combining it with a jump to make you go even higher. The submachine gun or stomp lets you stomp right down, causing an AOE explosion on impact. It can also smash through red doors. The shotgun or fireball lets you dash in any direction, smashing through anything that gets in its way. The Rocket Launcher or Dominion gives you a grappling hook that lets you traverse great distances while also giving you the benefit of rocket jumping where you shoot a wall to give yourself a big momentum boost. Easily my favorite of the cards because of the hook capabilities. I wasn't going to mention this one because of it not technically being a gun but I'll mention it anyway. For those who've played, I'm referring to the Book of Life. This overpowered card lets you teleport to any enemy, chest or object the distance on it is unlimited and it doesn't get discarded, granting endless possibilities. It's only available in the final stages of the game, so don't bother asking if there's a secret way to get it early. Almost forgot to mention the Katana, Neon White's signature weapon and soul card, which outside of deflecting projectiles, there's no reason to use this one. If for some reason you decide to use it and burn through all of its charges, you rely on your fists, which doesn't do anything to the demons, so don't bother trying it. You shouldn't be using the Katana or your fists anyway. There's a sense of progression with the soul cards and you'll be using them in different parts of the game, so there's no loadouts or anything like that. By the end, you'll have levels where it's a combination of all the game's cards, putting your movement skills to the test, but done so in a way that majority of the time, you'll be given the right card for the right situation and since it gets automatically slotted, you can just use the card as soon as you get it. So providing you know what the card does, it won't be a problem for you. When you complete your first mission, you'll receive the shiny medal. These medals are earned by completing the game in a specific amount of time. The three types of medals you can earn are Silver, Gold and Ace, with Gold and High awarding you with a Neon rank, which you'll need in order to progress through the game as Gabby will ask for a sufficient Neon rank before your next assignment with Mikey. For the first few chapters it matters, but I think around chapter 4 or 5, you don't have to worry too much about it. It's just a way of getting you familiar with the game's mechanics as soon as possible, but also encourages you to go for them, since you need them to progress. I was already going for the ace medal, so this didn't affect me too much. However, I learned of a special motor that exists in Neon White, and that's the red medal, earned for completing a level in an incredibly fast time. I only have reds for the levels that I liked, but knowing this helps to give the game more replay value, and this is on top of getting the gifts as well. As mentioned before, gifts are presents that spawn in each map after completing a level for the first time, and aren't necessarily straightforward to acquire. You need to use your brain a bit to keep your soul cards and use the environment to figure out a way to collect each of them, which adds new dynamics to each of these levels. 
going against the game's linear level design. Each character has a different type of gift, from cigars to perfume, toys, beer, and statues. Giving these gifts to characters will level your relationship with them, unlocking dialogue, memories of White's past, and special missions that put you in an assortment of environments like Violet's Nails of Doom and Red's illustrious card specific levels. It's pretty much content that you don't have to do, but if you love the game so much, you should just do them. I wanted to take a moment to highlight the boss fights that you have between green because these are some of my favorite levels in the game. The boss fights can be described as this, culmination of all of your skills that you've gained from that point of time in the game. The first two encounters you have with them are a taste of what you get, making use of the environment and soul cards to push up a level and do damage to a simultaneously. They even added medals for these levels, further incentivizing to bloody speedrunner, which I did. The final boss fight, however, was the icing of the cake for me, using all different cards, blasting your way through all kinds of obstacles and following up with a final push to blow him to shreds with your dominion while also avoiding attacks and traps. The thrill I get from doing these is immaculate, and you get so much satisfaction when you get that sweet ace medal. I wonder what the red times for these are. The OST in Neo and White is nothing but fantastic, produced by Machine Girl, with each chapter getting its associated track. It makes me feel like I'm on... Yeah, I don't really know what else to say here. Adrenaline pumping, exciting, cool, funky. It's solid and I may or may not have some of these stuck in my head right now while making this video. After completing the game, I found out that shooting enemy projectiles gives you a speed boost, something that I always thought was just due to shooting your weapon. Knowing that that helps so much with some of the levels as it can save heaps of time. This is also something the game doesn't tell you. Throughout my playtime, I never realized that the enemies were always standing still in this game. Not one time, even towards the end. This was clearly a design decision to make the game easier, but also more intuitive so that it's not too complicated for the average gamer. Once you earn a gold medal on a level, you will be given a level hint, which pops up in the level as this little flame thing, and it gives you a direction of where to go, saving lots of time. This is incredibly helpful for players who want to get their ace medals. It certainly helped me a lot here. Neo and White is an exceptional game, a game that I'm shocked at how people still don't know about it, with its 10,000 Steam reviews, which may seem big on the surface, but it's definitely small when you consider the millions of players that are on Steam every day. I can't stress this enough. Do yourself a favor and buy this freaking game. It's goofy, it never takes itself seriously outside of the story moments, and has an addicting gameplay loop that'll make you want more and chase those high scores. I'll be sure to continue playing to get that sweet 100% achievement and try the level rushes, which is the end game content of the game, where you have to complete levels as fast as possible across different types of levels. The game is also incredibly cheap, sale or no sale, ensuring that you're getting your money's worth. Looking back at 2022, it wasn't the best year for gaming, but if I played Neon White that year, I would have added it to my best games list. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. If I missed anything, comment down below. I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.